Learning how to learn. Definitely the most important skill in my life. Probably the most important skill in anyone's life at all. I'm going to be bold enough to say that. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and welcome to, I guess this is another overwalk because I'm still setting up my room. You don't even want to see the setup I had last video. It was, uh, it was pretty jank. In case you didn't notice, I'm in a different place than I was a year and a half ago, geographically wise. So here I am, here with the duck, the dog. Yo, ducky, look this way. Yeah. I'm with the duck, so we get to talk about stuff. Now, the number one request, the, the number one question I got, the number one request by far after my last video was, how did I do so many things in such a short span of time? Um, not only from like a job perspective, like how I did all those stuff in esports, but also how do I do my leaderboard challenges? Where I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take two weeks. And I'm just gonna like learn Magic: The Gathering and hit top 500. Or I'm just gonna like learn Splitgate. I don't know. It's another random game I played recently. Pretty good game, by the way. And hit top 15. Just like two weeks. Boom, done. One week for that game. But how do I do it? Is it because I'm some sort of esports video game god? It's not. It's not. I wish I was, but I'm not. It is a 100% learned and practiced skill. It's actually very similar to solving a Rubik's Cube in a lot of ways. If you've ever learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube, you'll know that it is 0% intelligence. You're not smart if you can solve a Rubik's Cube. You've just studied, and you've learned the steps to solving a Rubik's Cube. I'm not going to get into algorithms today, but what I will get into are two even more important and more, I guess, tangible things that you can learn right now in this video how to get good at things really fast. This sounds really cliche. I've probably heard it a hundred times in my life and not a single time did I understand it because a lot of people just say it. They're like, oh, look look towards your goals, right? What's, oh, what does that mean? Okay, I'm looking towards my goals. What it really means is, uh, so when you're learning how to drive, they teach you to not look down. Don't look in front of you. Look as far into the horizon as you can possibly look, right? That's what they teach you look all the way forward. Uh, reaching a goal or learning something very quickly is very, very similar. Even back to the Rubik's Cube analogy, if you've ever seen someone solve a Rubik's Cube, usually there are multiple steps that look super messed up, right? They'll go from like, okay, yeah, that's looking okay, to it just makes no sense anymore, the Rubik's Cube is completely destroyed, they do a few more moves and boom, it's solved, right? They were actually making progress the entire time, even though it didn't look like it that. And oftentimes, the most optimal way to get to a goal is uh, not always the prettiest. For example, a lot of games, pretty much every well-designed game, has noob traps. And it's intentional, right? Because you want to be able to engage the new players. You want a new player to be able to come into your game and be able to play really well above his skill level so he can feel really good and cool right off the bat. Every single game has something the new player can use to be really strong. The number one thing you must avoid is falling into these noob traps. Uh, these are things that won't help you at all later on. Absolutely not at all. Like, for example, if you learn, if you become a P90 god in Counter-Strike, great. You're gonna get probably pretty high. You'll probably get, like, high gold Nova, maybe even double AK, whatever, whatever you get. I, I don't know exactly how easy it is to hit ranks nowadays in CSGO, but you'll probably get pretty decently high and then you'll plateau hard. It doesn't even need to be an intentional noob trap. There are subtle noob traps. Like for example, if you want to play Ana, it's very easy, and I used to see Ana players who did this all the time in Masters, where you just go up to people in melee range, you stick your rifle in their butt, and you just boom, you heal them, just like that in melee range. You don't need to aim, it's OP. You have the highest healing in the game, why not, right? And. Um, Especially with your nade, right? Just go, why, why aim your nade? Just go up to people in melee range, nade. You hit yourself, it's OP. You hit everyone around you, you don't need to aim, you'll never miss, it's OP, right? Um, you can get to masters, or at least back when Ana was really broken, you can get to masters very easily with Ana, just doing that. And then you'd plateau hard. You'd never be able to climb again because uh, you just can't do that in higher ranks. Like, you're just gonna die. Once the DPS players are good enough, they're gonna kill you because you're so close. And uh, it's really, really rough because now the game thinks that you or you think that you're a Masters Ana player, but you actually have the skill of like a Platinum Ana player. So now the only way to remedy that, the only way to actually fix what you've done is to tank like 500 MMR 
by going in the back line, learning how to aim, learning how to snipe again and scope, learning how to land those long distance grenades, that's the only way. He basically wasted all that time, right? Probably hundreds of hours, like a hundred hours wasted because you were using uh, just an ineffective strategy. So how do, you, uh, how do you not do that? Well, it's pretty, it's not too hard. All you have to do is you need to think of where you want to go. So let's say you're in, I don't know, silver and you want to get to masters. Well, you need to identify the type of play you need to get into masters. And uh, pro I mean, probably you should overshoot, right? You can just watch pro players, you can watch uh, grandmaster players, you can just watch masters players, right? You need to identify what does a masters Anna look like? What does a masters soldier look like? Um, and you need to do that. You need to do that. If you're in silver, you don't need to know what a gold Anna looks like or a gold soldier looks like because that's not your goal. Your goal is masters, right? And back to the Anna analogy, if you are a silver Anna and you want to get masters with Anna, you need to learn how to uh, aim very well with your scope. You need to learn how to make really big long range grenades. Like if I were to go back to Overwatch, I haven't played in a long time, so my aim is probably really bad. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to aim, aim nades, I'm not going to be able to land sleeps, but I'm going to try to play the same way I played back when I was like at my peak top 100 or whatever uh, two years ago, and try to play that exact same way. Probably what's going to happen, I'm going to make a fool of myself for the first week. Maybe even the first two weeks, I'm going to look stupid. I'm going to be doing all these plays, they're going to fail horribly, I'm not going to be effective at all, I'm going to lose a billion MMR, but guess what? I'm going to get, at some point, oh, I'm, I'm going to get there, right? At some point, I'm going to get to that same point that I was at back when I was uh, that good. Maybe not that good, but I, uh, I'll be pretty darn close, and I'll just skip all that middle part. I'm not going to worry myself with wasting time on learning irrelevant skills. You know, I have another anecdote, and that's when I first started playing Overwatch. I hadn't really played an FPS game in a long time. I knew that my aim was complete garbage, like beyond garbage. It was so bad. I, I had never played an FPS game competitively to the point where my aim was any good at all. Like, I always just BSed my way through by having way better game sense than everybody, even though my aim was terrible, right? And I knew that that wasn't going to cut it. If I wanted to get to the level in Overwatch that I wanted to get to, I was going to need to have really good aim. But I wanted to be a support player. Okay. Uh, and I, I knew that I would rather be a support player with really good aim than be a support player who is limited because they, they were they like they couldn't aim so they played support. I wanted to be a support because I wanted to be a support, right? I didn't want to limit, limit myself, which really helped me later on when Anna came out. So what did I do? When the game came out, what did I play? Support? No. I played DPS only. In fact, I played Widowmaker pretty much exclusively. Exclusively Widowmaker and McCree. That's all I played. Didn't play a single support hero. I did eventually, as um, as season one approached, the first season of rank approached, I eventually started playing support heroes so I could start learning them, obviously. But I pretty much exclusively played support heroes, or, I mean DPS heroes, in order to get my aim to where it needed to be. And then when season one came out, came out, I never played a DPS hero ever again. I only ever played support heroes. Uh, it let me flex on some DPS heroes if I need to, but what was the result? The result was I was a sick Zenyatta player. When Anna came out, I was a sick Anna player. All the Mercies at the time could not switch to Anna because they just didn't have the aim. They never practiced it, right? And that's how I inevitably hit top 500 in season one is with Zenyatta and with Anna because they were so aim intensive and they were really good, but other support players just couldn't aim well enough because they didn't put in the time or the practice earlier on uh, that they needed. I'm gonna give one more anecdote and then I'm going to move on to the second big thing. But recently, I, I wanted to learn how to develop a game. I wanted to develop my own game, and I wanted it to be a good, like, actually good game, right? I didn't want it to be bad. So I, uh, I decided to learn how to do that, right? I decided to learn Unreal, because Unreal was the pro engine of choice, pretty much, over Unity, because Unity was easier, but the top end, and again, I'm not a pro, but from my research, uh, Unreal is just is just better for, for pro work, right? Because you have access to the engine, it's a, you have access to uh, doing whatever in season plus plus. Anyway, I chose Unreal, which is way harder than Unity. And then within Unreal, you have the option of using their like visual scripting language, which is called Blueprints, or C++. 
I knew a little bit of coding, but C++ is still pretty hard. I decided to learn C++. And not only did I decide to learn how to do C++, but I did it the correct way. I made sure that all the code I wrote was uh, multiplayer ready, like netcode ready. I made sure that it was all dynamic, that it all was able to be exported and like tweaked and modded later on in blueprints if I needed to. I made sure that everything was modularized, modularized so that if I wanted to bring on a team or if I wanted to bring on helpers later, I could easily do that. So the result was, for the first three weeks, I had really not much to show for it in terms of something I could show people. Like, honestly, if I wanted to do some, if I wanted to do this in Unity, or I wanted to do this in Blueprints, in Unreal, I probably could have achieved visually what I achieved in three weeks of learning C++ in just like maybe two days, uh, if I did it the Blueprint route. But the result is now, I have way more power, right? I have a game that is ready for multiplayer. I have a game that I can uh, turn into uh, any any number of players, right? It can be eight player co-op, it can be 12 player, 20 player co-op, it can be whatever. It's fully expandable, fully customizable. Every single thing in the game is uh, modular, which means I can add things, I can remove things, I can change anything I want to. And uh, the power of that is just insane because while those three first three weeks were super, super slow, the next three weeks after that will be turbo speed, right? Imagine if I made the game in blueprints, sure, I did all that, it was all spaghetti code, it was all garbage, and later I wanted to say, oh, actually, I want this to be a multiplayer game. Good luck, that'll take three weeks just by itself to learn. I need to scrap the whole thing. Oh, but now I want to make it a four-person multiplayer uh, co-op game instead of a two-player uh, co-op game. Now I need to scrap the whole thing again and learn how to do that, right? So the, the three weeks up front to learn the pro way to do it right out of the gate saved me realistically months and months and months of learning down the line if I just learned it sort of the way that a lot of people encourage you to learn things, which is, oh, just do it the easy way at first to get your head in the door, like, like that. No. no, don't do that. And I have one more thing to say before I, say, before I move on. It's also a mentality thing. This will save your brain as well, your mindset, I guess. This will save you a lot of rage. Whenever I'm playing a game, let's say I, I'm, my goal is like, I want to hit, I don't know, top 500 in three weeks. For those first two and a half weeks, I do not care what my rank is. Not a single bit. I don't even look. I mean, sure, I look, but uh, realistically, I don't care. It doesn't matter, right? If I'm silver and I'm trying to get to grandmaster, what does being gold matter to me? What does being platinum matter to me, right? What does one day matter to me? Um, you see this a lot with uh, trying to exercise. People trying to lose, uh, I want to lose 10 pounds of fat in two months, let's say, uh, someone says. A lot of times the tendency is to take it day by day. So if you have a cheat day, let's say, an accidental cheat day, right? Like, no, you're at dinner, you're, you're, eating, you're eating well, you've been doing really well for two weeks, someone has a slice of cheesecake that they ordered that, they, they're, that they're not eating, you're like, oh, I'll just have one slice, and then you wind up having the entire slice of cheesecake, oh my god, that's like 1,800 calories, that's insane, I totally botched everything. Oh, wow, it's just a mess, and a lot of people quit at that point. But if you really think about it, I want to lose 10 pounds of fat in two months. What's that one day going to do? Like, how much longer do I have? Well, I still have five weeks left. I've already lost two pounds or whatever. Five weeks for eight pounds, that's totally doable. That's how I would think. In fact, I could probably do this a few more times <laughs> at this rate. I could probably have a couple more days of this. So if you really, if you just think about it, if you think in long term, you won't stress yourself out so much. Of course, it's more stressful as you approach your goal. But um, I mean, if you're, if you're like three days away and you're still gold and your goal was grandmaster, then chances are you just, you just had a bad goal and you need to reevaluate and you know, just take the loss, right? All right, that was the most important point. That's why I spent so long on it. There is one more thing. Dude, this door is actually pretty cool. Like, like this is some uh, industrial, that's some steampunk candles there. I guess it smells like wood. But, okay, that, like I said, that's the most important point. That's why I spent so long on it. There's one more thing, and that's the balance between hard learning, soft learning, and uh, experimentation, I'll call it. So the way I approach anything is through a combination of those three things. Uh, so I look up 
educational content around the subject matter, which is divided into hard skills and soft skills. And then I also do my own experimentation and my own learning by myself. Self-discovery, I guess you can call it. So what do I mean by soft skills and hard skills? Uh, let's take, for example, I'll use the Unreal example again. I like mixing game examples and like job uh, skill examples because it lets people use it across a variety of different things. Uh, but for Unreal, I did a few things. I looked up a ton of videos from GDC, which is the, one of the biggest games conference, uh, like games industry conferences in the world. And I just, I just listened to people talk about game design. That's it. Just talks about game design in general for hours and hours and hours. Not, not, I mean, not like forever, but I listened to quite a few talks. These are just people being like, oh, this is what I think about how to design games. Now, these did not help me specifically to do anything. I didn't specifically learn anything from these videos. They didn't teach me how to code. They didn't teach me anything, really. All, all I did was sort of expand my mind and give me background information to learn about. Anyway, hard skills, I'm just going to talk about the categories now. Hard skills is the opposite. Hard skills is like I learned a thing. I watched a video about how to attach a camera to a spring arm. And there you go. I now know how to, how to attach a camera to a spring arm. As simple as that. That's a hard skill. That's something that I can actually do. And then there's self-discovery. That's just going into the engine and playing around and just trying to do stuff without any sort of guidance or anything. In a game example, it would be like if I, uh, so for my map mastery videos are, I would consider them almost hard skills because a lot of the stuff I talk about is just straight up fact, right? It's like on this map, this is a good angle. Uh, this is where you should watch out for. It's just a bunch of things that are very cold, very hard, things that you can apply immediately. Like if you're Anna, this is a good angle to heal from if your team is pushing in from here. I would consider those hard skills. Not the hardest skills in the world. The hardest skills in the world would be like uh, my Doomfist primer, my Doomfist combo guide, where I'm like, on Doomfist, here's the com here's like the correct timing, the correct sequence of buttons to do the maximum amount of damage in, that, in the lowest amount of time as Doomfist. And that, uh, that is the hardest of skills, right? You just literally do that, and that's it. A soft skill would be more like watching an Overwatch League VOD review, right? An Overwatch League VOD review, not going to help you very much, unfortunately. Uh, as far as like, a, a, like actually helping you do a specific thing, it'll give you a lot of insight, sure. It'll really, it'll expand your mind, sure, but it's not going to be directly applicable to your games. You're not going to be able to be like, oh, wow, well, I guess if Jake should have done that thing in that game against uh, Nixel, then... I should do that thing. Like, no, that's not how that works, right? You can't directly apply it. But it's still really good knowledge. Um, and then, of course, you have self-experimentation where you just go into maps and you do your own thing. So it's really a balance between these three things. Um, for example, when I wanted to learn League of Legends, I would start by going in and just picking a hero I liked and just playing it, completely cold, completely blind. All I would do is I would look up a build order guide and sort of follow it, uh, but besides that, I would not watch anyone play the hero. I would not watch, I would not read any guides on the hero. I just wanted to go in and get my own take on the hero uh, myself before I was tainted by anyone else's outside knowledge. Then I would go and I would do all that stuff. I would look at hero guides after I had a few days of experience. I'd look at hero guides. I would go and I would watch pro players play them. And then I would go back and I would, ass I would assimilate that into my play. What this allowed me to do is it would have all the benefits of my newbie creativity. Because remember, when you're a new player, that's the best possible time because you have a new outlook. You have a unique outlook that no one else has, right? So you're the most likely to find new stuff. And then I would combine that with uh, the experience people's takes and I would get a pretty good result. Um, on that note, like I said, a lot of new players are, uh, uh, are they're really scared of doing things by themselves. If anything, they're like, oh, well, you know, the pros know better. Like I said, as a new player, you have the freshest outlook. You have the, you have the, all the, you have the trump card when it comes to coming up with new creative ideas. All right, we're back. We're still with the duck. Like I said, he was panting a lot. So uh, he's pretty tired. I figured we'd come inside. It's kind of warm outside, kind of humid outside, so I understand it. 
But uh, getting back to the point, like I said, those three pillars, the soft skills, the hard skills, and your, your self-discovery, your self-experimentation, think of it this way. Soft skills are a multiplier on everything else, right? You can watch a million GDC videos and you're never gonna be a game developer because you're not gonna actually learn anything. In fact, I used to do this back when I used to watch like so many self-help videos. And I used to watch, read so many self-help self -help books. Like I would watch everyone like I literally I would watch Ty Lopez okay here in my garage guy I would watch that guy I would watch every single person who was willing to be like this is how you can better yourself I would watch for like four hours a day I would watch and but I wasn't doing anything with my life I wasn't getting up I wasn't doing anything so in the end they didn't help me uh, well at that time they didn't help me at all but once I started actually getting up and learning a gym regimen and starting to do things and starting to uh, make progress with businesses and careers, then those things I learned from all those 100 hour probably of self-help, um, like motivational speaking stuff, it then helped me afterwards. I think that that's probably the biggest mistake people do is they focus too much on that. Like I know people who just watch hundreds and hundreds of hours of Overwatch League VOD reviews and like these really high in the sky, high in the clouds uh, analysts. That's why all my analysis, I try to be much more concrete because there's a lot of people who sit there and like talk about all these crazy, like, like I said, high in the cloud concepts that no one can actually apply to their games. Very useful to know, but like I said, there's just a glut of that. and. T the tendency is to watch a lot of that and you will know exactly how like New York can beat Seoul in the next Overwatch League match but you'll have no clue how to climb out of goal. Like I said, it's a balance. You need to, you need to watch that stuff though. You need to watch um, the soft skills video that I talked, videos that I talked about or, con or read content. You need to learn hard skills and you need to self-experiment. Those are all very important things and you need to have a balance. Remember, they all multiply each other, right? Um, every th the more you prepare and the more you learn surrounding knowledge before jumping in, the better you're gonna do. But um, there comes a point where, like I said, 10, uh, 10 times something is really good, 100 times something is really good, but then 101 times something is not worth it on top of that, right? It's diminishing returns. So, uh, and that's kind of the secret. Now, there's a lot more stuff to talk about in more detail that I'll get into in the future, but basically it's a combination of make sure everything I do is for my end goal, no matter how stupid I look getting there. That's why I'm not very Twitch friendly when I'm learning games. Like, I look really dumb. Yeah, you, you'll be watching me and be like, this guy is actually awful at video games. How does he possibly get anywhere for the first week? Because uh, especially fighting games, like um, in Guilty Gear, for example, I was learning Potemkin. He has some insane combos as far as his optimal combos. They're super hard to execute. So I was like, damn, I guess I'll have to learn that. So I was a complete idiot for the first two weeks I played that, that character. I just literally lost to every single person. But then once I finally got it down, I became like a tournament tier player. Not a really good, amazing player, but like a pretty good player. Um, overnight almost once I once I once everything finally clicked into place that it's a lot of times it's it's almost like you're building a bunch of individual things like how ships are built right like they're built in pieces in individual pieces and then eventually they all come together and boom they work um, so doing that and then also making sure I have a healthy dose of outside extra knowledge like soft skills that don't necessarily help me and hard skills and I make sure I do my own self uh, experimenting and self-finding. That really helped me in Magic the Gathering, for example, because the, in the season that I hit top 500, it was really weird because War of the Spark came out. A new set came out just days before the season ended, and I was able to make a unique deck that just took everyone off guard and completely crushed everyone. That's how I went from Mythic to like rank 300 Mythic was with a weird Jeskai Feather deck if you play Magic. But um, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna make more videos about this in the future. Those are the two key things though. Look ahead and uh, make sure you have a combination of those three different learning techniques. Um, I really enjoyed you guys 
asking, like giving me ideas. Like I said, there's a bunch of stuff that I already want to talk about, but if I know that there's one thing that is a priority with everyone, then that's super good. So be sure to leave it in the comments. And uh, I guess that I guess the dog's gonna go to sleep now. And I should have this set up by hopefully the next video. So I'll have my real mic and everything all good. But until then, I hope you all enjoyed. Never forget to stay positive and have a great day. I'll see you next time.